Well, hello everybody. This is the pole saw for my Remington telescopic pole saw. Can't give you the model number. It's quite old. But I was using it the other day and this locking collar nut right here split about half around right here and then up the middle. You cannot get a replacement nut for this. They're not available and you couldn't put it on anyway by the way this is designed. They could have made provisions for that. But they say if you can't, if it breaks for any reason, then buy a new one. I don't like this type of disposable society we're in, so I'm going to attempt to make a new one here. Not everybody will be able to do this. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. It worked fine. The only other problem I have with it is I cannot quite get full extension. I'll show you why when we get into things. And the trigger lock switch doesn't work which I don't use anyway. I think that's a bad idea to have one there on a pole saw so you can lock it on and keep it running. The deal is you cannot pull this out the front even if you release the wires. On this inner pole there's some kind of a plug in the end so it will not allow it to telescope apart. This is riveted on where are they? Right here. So it's not supposed to be removable but it's going to be as we move along and even if you could take this off if they would have just put nuts and bolts there I don't think the nut would have fit over that anyway but we can at least get it apart I believe alright well I've removed three of the screws already to kind of help speed things up a bit go ahead and get this last one open and we'll try to disconnect the wires just pull that part off. I can't lift up on the switch because this trigger lock right here is holding me up. I don't know if it just snaps in there, but I'm taking this pokey bit here and I'm just going to go in by the wire and try to release the spring. Take a picture if you need to reference where things go. If I can find a spot. I'm working blind. I need to be on the other side of this. Try it this way. Yep, there it was. It was on this front edge. So I'll try to do the black one that's just underneath it. Yeah, okay. I got those out. That should release the wires that go up the pole itself. Get those out of there. Come on. Alright, so now we've got this taken apart. Get it out of the way. So what's in there is this coiled wire, like an old telephone cord. And over the years, this isn't rubber, it's some kind of polyvinyl or something. It's so stiff, I can't get full extension. I can kind of unwind it as I extend the pole and get it a little bit better, but I never can get it all the way out. So what I'm thinking about doing in here is taking sections of this off to allow it to extend a little easier, maybe leaving some, leaving a couple inches, taking a couple inches, so I can make it more pliable, but still leave some of the integrity on there. That's just an idea, and I am shooting in the dark and speculating that we can get this thing apart, so let's move on. All right, best shot I can get. You can see I've got this nut all loose, and when I extend, there's the spot I'm speaking of. There's something on the end of this extension pole right here that prevents this from coming out. So the plan at this stage is I'm going to drill out these two rivets right here, take them off, and hopefully I can pull the wire all the way out the front and then send the pole out the back because this I do not believe will fit down through there anyway. There's a plug in the end right here that encapsulates the wire. It feels like a very very hard rubber or some form of a plastic and I'm thinking that it's a plug. I can't pry it out. I'm thinking that that plug extends beyond at least this first rivet right here and that's why I cannot get it out. We'll find out after these are drilled and we'll move along. 
All right, I got what I think is an appropriate size drill to drill these rivets. I've got it kind of nested in between a couple pieces of wood here. Let's see how this works out. to adjust my size a little larger I'll go ahead and do this other one here just like I did and I'll get a little bit larger of a bit now I went to do this back one and it popped right off with that bit maybe I'm just not deep enough yet but it looks like I'm a lot deeper than the other one there it went so there's one rivet I think I'm gonna have to top that one out not quite through it, I guess. There it went. Got a little bit of the fiberglass there. Yeah, that feels like it's running through something. Let me get a punch and I'll tap that out. Alright, I've got it coming out. There's the second one. They appear they were the same. Yep, there's the plug I was referring to, just like I thought. It does only go past the first one. So I'm wondering if I can pull this out the top. Yes. This section here is already extended pretty well. Maybe I just need to do something back here. We'll figure that out. That's the piece I was hunting for. That looks fun. Okay. And I'm thinking this pole will go out the back. It did. There's that sleeve I was referring to. I thought it might have been something in the end, but it's just a little split sleeve that's glued on it. That's why we couldn't go out the front. So that gives us hope that maybe we can come up with a solution. Alright, well I've just made kind of a quick sketch of the original nut. Just the cutaway portions of it. This is the center line right here. It's measuring like 1864 on the OD. Now this is an ejection molded ABS so there's quite a bit of draft uh, from the top to the bottom. So I measured across the bottom. It doesn't need to be drafted in this case. And then the hole is like 1 and 40 thousandths. It's 1 630 tall. The threads go up in there about 1 and a quarter inches. 12 TPI on the threads. And then this angle I do not know yet. I'll try to use this nut with an indicator to get that dialed in before I make that cut on the new piece. Now, between where it's got these cutouts in here it's not very thick between there and there I may beef things up a bit I'll discover that on the fly I would like to make this out of Delrin I do not have a piece that is large enough in diameter so my attempt is going to be to make it out of PVC fittings that are glued together to give enough of the dimensions or material that I need and then take away to reveal the part that's the plan anyway all right guys one trip to the hardware store three dollars and 96 cents later i'm back on my workbench i picked up a couple of quarter 20 by inch and a half long bolts that will fasten this back to the pole and then a couple quarter 20 nylocks they're going to be the absolute perfect length to remount that and the best thing i could come up with was an inch and a quarter pvc coupling and an inch and a quarter by three quarter bushing reducer there is a shoulder down in here. The first thing I'm going to do is prime these and I'll put these together. And this bushing comes just shy of that shoulder. So if I kind of simulate where the other side of that is, 
it's going to be very close. It may be just a tiny bit shorter than this one, but I think we're going to make it. I'll get that glued in there and then I'll cut this portion off and we'll start figuring out how we need to set up and do that. This three quarter inch hole right here is a little bit, well it's for three quarter inch pipe, it's larger than that, but it's a little bit larger than this diameter by maybe eight thousandths or so, but that should not affect it in any way. I've only got one shot because this is all I bought. All right, guys, I'm over at the lathe. I'm just going to start winging it here. The first thing I'm going to do, I've got it chucked up backwards all the way to the chuck. I'm going to turn an area here, cylindrical, and then I'm going to flip it around to clean up this side. So here we go. Let's see what happens. got it flipped around and supported with this bull nose center these fittings are really nowhere to being true I'm gonna turn it on for a second maybe you can see don't know if that picked up but I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna come in and touch off and just clean this up and then I'm gonna cut it off and face it back it's just the way I chose to do it Alright, well I lost a clip of facing this off, so I did face this off down in here. When I turned this, I got into my points a little bit, it's just the way it worked out. I plan on using these flaps to my advantage, over having to set up and do milling operations to flute this or something along those lines. I'm just going to use this as my grip right here on the end. The bits where I've got squeeze out with the uh, primer and the glue, I'll just dress those back with a file and pretty them up just a bit. I am going to put a little chamfer on this end to break the sharp edge. So let's get that done. Let's see how we did there. Looks good to me. All right, well, I got most of the glue and primer filed off of there, but I had a sharp edge right here, very sharp edge. So I came in with a threading tool and just cut a little V in there. Feels really nice now. All right, well, I've wrapped a bit of paper around it and stuck it backwards in here. I've got a depth to that shoulder set here. So it is right here, so I'm going to cut back a just about an eighth inch beyond it parting pvc this stuff is very difficult to hold so it just wants to slip and slide around so i'm actually going to use my handheld hacksaw cut this off and then we'll face it flat all right well i cut it off and pulled it back out just so i could show i was trying to utilize this little shoulder in here as part of a start for a thread or something like that I've got a little gap where it didn't quite meet and I knew it wasn't going to, but it's just really scabby looking. I think I'm going to go ahead and rather than recut it again with a hacksaw, I'm just going to face this all flat down to this surface right here. Ultimately, it will probably end up being, oh, just under an eighth inch shorter, but I'll just put that much more thread in the bottom because it does have a waist area up here that's just a straight turn. So I don't think that will affect anything. But that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to face this flat. All right, I've got this face cleaned up. Everything's looking good. This ended up being about an eighth inch shorter than the other one. So I kind of went back to my diagram here to start looking at things. And this is not the scale, by the way. I measured a one and a quarter inch of thread length on this. That's not even close. It's 5 eighths. I don't know how I got that number. So what I've determined is we've got 5 eighths of thread length. 
and then measuring from the top of the old one down to where this taper stops is 5 8 Originally, this is turned up the 5 8 plus whatever the other one is. I think it was 3 8 this flat gap in here. So I'm going to bore this thing out to 5 8 plus 3 16 to an internal diameter of 1.420. I just kind of measured that out. Then we'll thread this section and then we'll flip it around and we'll come in through this hole and cut this angle until we contact this point right here. That's probably clear as mud. But I've got to chuck it up like this, bore it to depth, thread it, flip it, cut the angle in here, and then we'll test it out and see where we're at. All right, I've got my piece chucked up in here. I've got a boring bar set. I, I'm boring to a depth of 800, 12 and a half thousandths. So to do that, I've got a carriage stop right here, a micrometer stop, and I've rung two gauge blocks together that is 812 and a half thousandths. First thing I'm gonna do is just come up here to where I just touch that face of that work, right there. Now I, I put my gauge block right in this slot right here and I will bring it up to where it just catches just like that and then lock the quill on it move that away now I have a depth set of 820 812 and a half thousandths so as I go and bore this hole I'll be making it bigger I'll hit this stop and on my final pass I'll hit the stop and I'll feed in and it'll clean up the bottom of that hole. All right, well, I'm set up and ready to go. I'm only going to show a couple of passes here at the most, just general stuff. It's going to take me a while to hog this out. I'm starting probably somewhere between three quarters of an inch and I'm going for my target of one inch, 420 thousandths. So I'll go in here, turn it on, I'll back up to touch off, set my zero, and then I'll start coming this way and taking it out. So there's a touch off point. Set my zero. Oh, maybe take about 20 thousandths to start with, which is really only a 10 thousandths cut. Just coming in here by hand. Hit the stop, come back out, take some more. That's pretty much it. When I get closer to my target, I'll start taking measurements and take off just enough. And then like I said, once I get the inner diameter the way I want it, I'll hit the stop and I'll feed in to face the bottom of that hole. All right, well, I'm set up to do the internal thread now. I've got the bore out to size like I'd mentioned. I've got it squared up, my internal threading tool here, squared up with the work. Basically, my setup here is I move the compound to 29 and a half degrees, feeding in this direction. You can put it over here if you have enough room, but I think I was going to run into Chuck, so that way. And then I set it to just a zero, some random zero. Then came in and the point of the tool right at the edge of the work did the same thing here. I'm going five eighths deep on the threads. So I set a five eighths gauge in here, tightened it up. So I know when I go in, there's the depth of my thread. When I'm threading under power, when I get very close to this, I'm gonna disengage the half nuts and that is just going to be a round ring in there, a stop. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn it on. I'm going to back the cutter out with the cross slide until I just contact, set my zero, and I'll be taking my depths of cut from right here. I'll go in a little bit, I'll run, I'll turn out of the thread, I'll come back out, go back to zero, a little bit more here, and we're going to inch our way onto these. Now I do not know exactly what, I know what the pitch is, but I don't know what the true diameter is 
uh, for how these are going to work. So I'm going to try to test fit that piece as I'm cutting the threads once I see them start to point up just to turn it for that one unit. But that's what we're going to do. All right, well, I'm set up now. I am, I've got my lathe set for 12 threads per inch. So like I said, I'm going to come in, touch off, make my zero, take a little scratch pass, and then we're going to check it with a thread gauge. Just touched off. Like I said, I'm zero in my gauge here. I'm just going to take maybe, I don't know, five thousandths on this dial. I'm actually running a little fast. I need to slow this lathe down. Alright, I've slowed the lathe down a little bit. So. I'm going to wait for a number to come around. This is an uh, even thread, so on this lathe I should be able to use any number, any line, on this thread dial right here. So I'll just go back to two and just engage two. So now we're feeding in. I'm watching down here. Just like that. in, bring it back to zero, and then, where's my gauge, there it is, you can't see this, I'm just going in to make sure that I am on 12 threads per inch, and I am, so now I'm going to start making successive passes just like that, I'm going to go ahead and take it up, about 10 now. Fire it up, catch a number, do it again. the idea. I'll keep making passes until we get close to the mark. All right, well, I pretty much got the threads cut in here, but I cannot get the rod to test it. So what I did was I left everything locked on my lathe and I spun the chuck off to see if I could test the thread fit. But the problem is there's a lot of extra material still yet back in here, so I wasn't able to reach the threads to check the engagement. So what I'm going to have to do is go ahead and finish it, hope it fits. If it doesn't fit, I'm going to have to remount it, pick up the threads, and cut them more and do testing that way. The only thing I have left to do right here is just break this inside edge, and we'll be moving on to flipping this around and cutting the taper. All right, well, I've got the work flipped around so I can start working on the taper. Originally, I planned on chucking this up and dialing in the taper, but I came up with a different way to do it. I don't think it has to be entirely accurate. I used this protractor and found that angle. It happened to turn out to be 71 degrees. And then from that point, I set my compound at 71 used a parallel on the side and one here to get my block straight to it and then as a sanity check came in here like so hitting the end of this block run this in and out and it runs true to it or true enough so that's where I'm at right now I'm going to go ahead and because I'm tapering in, I have to start at the back of the hole. So I'll go down in a little bit of ways, 
take a little bite, take a cut, move back, take some more, move back, and I'll inch my way out. So let's try to do that right now. Just going to come in and touch towards the back end. There we go. Now I'll wheel in and wheel back out. Take a little bit more. And just start making that up. Just like that, once I hit the bottom inside of there, I hope to end up with about an eighth inch flat up here and then the taper that runs down. We'll see how we do. All right, well, I've cut the internal taper here and left myself about an eighth inch, like I was saying. Let's see if these threads actually work. Oh, they're snug, but look at that. Give it a snug. Oh, yeah. That locked down great. The only thing I see here is that eighth inch discrepancy in the height of this. I'm not coming down all the way. I'd like to see more thread engagement there. How do we do that? The depth of the threads are plenty deep. I'm almost feeling like I need to enlarge, enlarge that taper a bit to get it to come down deeper. I think I'm going to chuck this back up and take some more off of that uh, to get more engagement like I'd said, but at this stage it would work just fine. Now we're on refinement. Alright, well I enlarged the taper a couple of times and I was making up that gap and on my last pass I got a little bit too overzealous and aggressive. It does still work and it definitely is taking more threads up in here. There's the lock. I wanted an eighth. We're just shy of that. I'm starting to see the collet come out the front. That's not a big deal, but I was just trying to do things as it was. So that is a nice tight fit. Extend. Lock. No problem. Seems like this is successful, so now we get to go back together with it. Alright guys, well here's a closer shot of the finished locking collar, for lack of a better word. You can still see some purple primer in there, that's just the way it is. This really is function before fashion, but I do my best anyway to try to make things visually pleasing. My little 3 16 straight area in here went away because I got a little too overzealous that coupled with losing an eighth inch in height but it does work and it works well this uh leaving these flats up here is all the grip i need to tighten things up all right well i'd mentioned earlier on that i was going to take sections of the insulation off of these wires to try to get to full extension and full compression I took bits out here and there and I ended up taking it all off. This straight section I started right here on the far end of this straight section. That's where the coil started. Everything is gone now. i had done several mock-ups and trying to find the sweet spot. This is what I ended up with. I actually wrapped this in electrical tape and did a couple more tests and cycles and the tape with it kind of compressing and going back out the wires that is it got loose and started turning into a nasty mess so that's all gone now this is the way i'm running all right well i went ahead and popped this button off right here and took the switch out so i could investigate what was going on here i made a mistake i called that a trigger lock and in normal tools that's what you would find like a drill for example, you would pull this, push the button, and the trigger would stay engaged. That is not what this is. This is not a trigger lock. This is a lockout button. Until you push that, you should not be able to pull the trigger. 
but this one does not work for some reason. I've investigated this, looked down in here, I see nothing broken. I don't know what is preventing this from locking before you push the button. It's just the way it is. Uh, it does just pop out like so, so I can put it back together. All right, well, here's an example on how the ends are cut. They're just square cut and razor sharp on the edges. The opposite side of this is where the wires go in and out. It was the same way. I went ahead and took some sandpaper and really rounded over and contoured this so it's nice and smooth so we don't gouge or hurt any of the insulation on the wires. All right, well, I've installed the inner tube and just locked it right here. I've got a piece of twine running through so that I can use to pull the wires back in. It's kind of a long way to go, but try to get these started. Like so. And just help fish as I'm pulling out the other side. Go ahead and push this in. And there's that. Alright, we've got the end going on here, making sure everything is looking good. Come up from the bottom with this bolt. May need to, yep, there we go. Do the second one here and I'll just simply snug these up and we'll move on. I've got the switch reinstalled. I'm going to go ahead and hook up these wires. Black one is going to come around here and go into the bottom of the switch. Just push it in there until it bites. There we go. And then the white one is going to come in to the top. Right here. Looking good. When I put this on up through these holes, I want the wire that's coming down this pole to go underneath this one and up over that one. So I'll try to start one side of it. And then we need this one to go over to the other side like so. And then I've got to push it and get this grommet down in here like so. Now I need to get the wires down into the notch where they sit. Everything's looking good like it's supposed to be there. And then we'll go ahead and put the top on. And I've got four screws to go in. So let me get these installed and we'll move along. Alright, well everything's put back together and tightened up. I'm under full compression right here. I've never really been able to do that. Let's see if we get full extension. You hear it? Full extension, nice and tight. See if we can get back to full compression. May have to massage it a little bit. Yeah, see it's starting to bind up. I'll just try to wiggle. And there it is. So I'll just be super careful with it to not scar the wires on the inside, but that is much better than what it's always been. Alright, well I'm going to test the circuitry here. I don't have a saw hooked up to it, so I've got my meter in line. I'm going to press the switch on the other end to see if we get line voltage.
I would say that's a go. All right, guys, it's been all put together, including the chainsaw itself. Plugged it in, give it a few rips. It looks like it's going to work just fine. It's put in storage for the next time. I seriously doubt that nut I built will ever break in the future. It's just my opinion. But in fact, if it does, I'll simply make another one. I realize not everyone can do things like I just did. It was just a general information video. However, I did read on a forum or so that there were two solutions people came up with. The first was get a couple of hose clamps and clamp around that and call it good. Works fine. You're only borrowing time on that in my opinion. It's inevit inevitably it's going to break down and you're going to have a complete failure. Maybe while even in use. I wouldn't recommend doing that. And the second one was a part of a plastic union and I believe it was from Lowe's. It gave a specific part number. I didn't make note of it. Using the female portion of that, they claimed it fit on there and worked just fine. While I was at Ace, I did pick up, I believe it was a half inch plastic union and took it apart. And it didn't appear that it was even close that it could possibly work. So I didn't even bother. I just went this route. Just some general information. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for watching and good luck.